We started off researching Romney with an open mind. We read books on him, news articles, many YouTube videos, debates, speeches, and more until we couldn't take any more of Mitt Romney. What we came to find was Romney spoke contradictions in almost everything he said, from his stance on abortion to the role the federal government should play in our lives. These are our findings. This is the Romney deception. Well, there are a number of things we we're doing for veterans. I think. Mitt Romney first ran for office in the 1994 Senate race in Massachusetts against none other than Ted Kennedy. What was Mitt Romney's platform? He challenged a long-term incumbent on the basis that he'd be better for civil rights and societal problems in such aspects as gay rights. In a letter to the Log Cabin Club of Massachusetts, Romney states, I am pleased to meet many of you personally during your September meeting. As a result of our discussions and other interactions with gay and lesbian voters across the state, I am more convinced than ever before that as we seek to establish full equality for America's gay and lesbian citizens, I will provide more effective leadership than my opponent. Brent Bozel, founder of Media Research Center, an American Conservative Union board member, had this to say after Romney's 1994 debate. Romney has more in common with liberal Democrats than he does with conservatives. Romney lost to Kennedy 41 to 58 percent, but the moderate trend continues eight years later as Romney ran for governor you know, of Massachusetts. By, uh, definitions of who votes for which party have uh, been blown away in this campaign. I think people recognize that I'm not a partisan Republican, that I'm someone who is moderate and that my, my views are progressive. Many conservatives agree with that statement, including prominent conservative Rush Limbaugh. Bad news for Romney, conservatives just don't trust him. Rush Limbaugh. 70% of the Republicans polled are split all over the map, but they know that they do not support Romney. Romney is not a conservative. Now, for anyone still clinging to the notion that Romney is a conservative, note these additional facts. He supported and put in place a permanent assault weapons ban and vowed not to chip away at Massachusetts' tough gun laws. Romney's governorship saw the initiation of the first state-level individual mandate to purchase health care insurance. And Romney would be vocally pro-choice for I'm all of his governorship. committed to my promise to maintain the status quo with regards to laws relating to abortion and choice. Of course, this brings us to Romney's plethora of flip-flops. Well, Bill Whittle, you're a principled conservative. Doesn't it rankle you to hear that we're stuck with no other choice but a guy whose ideological compass is a weather vane like Romney? By far, Romney's most famous switch of sides on an issue is the topic of abortion. Romney was firmly pro-choice in the race for Senate in 1994. I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to make that choice. A decade and a half later, Romney is staunchly pro-life and says he would overturn Roe v. Wade. Do I believe the Supreme Court should overturn Roe v. Wade? Yes, I do. Do you believe life begins at conception? I do. My position has been the same throughout my political career, and it goes back to the days of 1970. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose, and am devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. Romney apparently became pro-life during his term as governor. But you weren't always pro-life. That, that's correct. Uh, when I ran for governor, uh, I, I believed I could keep the law as it was. Then when I became governor, a piece of legislation came to my desk, which would have led to the creation of new life for the purposes of destroying it. I simply couldn't sign it. Became pro-life, and I continue to be pro-life. Would you have supported the constitutional amendment that would have established the definition of life at conception? Absolutely. Next up, remember Romney's support for gays in the Senate race? Mr. Romney, <clears throat> you say you're a moderate on social issues, one who will defend abortion rights, equal rights for women, for blacks, and for gays. In fact, you say you will do more to promote gay rights than Senator Kennedy. The Boy Scouts of America has an exclusionary policy banning gay members. Do you support that policy? I feel that all people should be allowed to participate in the Boy Scouts regardless of their sexual orientation. During my term in office, I successfully prohibited out-of-state couples
from coming to our state to get married and then going home. We fought hard and prevented Massachusetts from becoming the Las Vegas of gay marriage. Now we're, we're having issues that relate to same-sex marriage. My view is we should have a federal amendment of the Constitution defining marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. Recently, George Stephanopoulos of ABC called out Romney on his changing view. The issue of gay rights. When you ran for senator in 1994, you supported don't ask, don't tell policy on gays in the military. As what you called it, uh, a first step ultimately lead to gays and lesbians being able to serve openly and honestly in our nation's military. Is that still the goal, that gays and lesbians should be able to serve openly? And well, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has worked well. Uh, we're in the middle of a conflict. Now is not the time for a change in that regard. I don't have a policy posture as to uh, allowing gays in the military to serve there openly. Illegal immigration is another issue. My own view is, consistent with what you saw in the Lowell Sun, that those people who have come here illegally and are in this country, the 12 million or so that are here illegally, should be able to sign up for permanent residency or citizenship. The saying that we're gonna to say to the people who've come here illegally that now you're all gonna to get to stay, or some large number are gonna to get to stay and become permanent residents of the United States, that will only encourage more people to do the same thing. People res respond to incentives. And if you can become a, a permanent resident of the United States by coming here illegally, you'll do so. Finally, gun control. We do have tough gun laws in Massachusetts. I support them. I won't chip away at them. I Romney as governor supported the assault safety. weapons ban. What do you believe was the intent of the founders for the Second Amendment in the Constitution? I believe the intent of the founders was to allow for the individual citizens of America to be able to bear arms for their personal protection, for hunting, or for any other legal purpose. Would you agree with Thomas Jefferson that the strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves from tyranny in government? Um, I don't know that that's highly relevant today, but I believe in the Second Amendment. In that case, why did you vote in favor of the Brady Bill and the assault weapons ban? With regards to the assault weapon ban in Massachusetts, pro-gun lobby came together with the anti-gun lobby and fashioned a bill which both sides encouraged me to sign. I did sign. With regards to the Brady Bill, I have long believed that we should do a background check on people uh, who are buying a weapon to make sure they're not nuts or, or have criminal records. He would later buy a lifetime membership in the NRA. In 2004, Governor Romney, in fact, signed the permanent assault weapons ban. Then Mitt Romney decided to run for president. Uh, out on the campaign trail, Mr. Romney touted his Second Amendment bona fides by saying that he was a lifetime member of the NRA. He joined the NRA as a lifetime member in August 2006, just before announcing his presidential run. The NRA last week endorsed Mitt Romney for president. I've been pro-gun and continue to be pro-gun. I don't line up 100% with the NRA. I don't see eye to eye with the NRA in every issue. But it didn't take me very long to understand that there are millions and millions of people who care very deeply about their constitutional right to bear arms. That's not quite consistent to say you're for Brady and so-called assault gun ban, but support of the Second Amendment because we see that that's really a denial of the Second Amendment. Now, if that's not coming down on both sides of an issue, I don't know what is. In politics, it's pretty much standard operating procedure that when you're running for office, you look at your opponent's record, you find some place where he or she has changed position, and you say they're a flip-flopper. This guy really is. He finds it so difficult to come down on one side of an issue. If he's with an audience, he gets to, he wants to identify with and satisfy that audience and will say what he thinks they want to hear. <laughs> well, there is one example where Mitt Romney doesn't just cater his beliefs to the audience he's presently in front of. Last year, 44% of voters in Nevada voted to end marijuana prohibition in their state. I believe that marijuana should be illegal in our country. It is the pathway to drug usage. I'm told there's even a synthetic marijuana as well that's available. A synthetic marijuana that's available and other pain It makes me sick. I have tried it and it makes me throw up. I have tried all the medications there are and all the forms that come in after high stimulators or steroids. I have muscular dystrophy that's completely against my DNA. I'm sorry to hear my, that. Uh, my question for you is, will you arrest me and my doctors if I get medical marijuana? I'm not, in, I'm not, in, I'm not in favor of medical marijuana being so legal you the have country. Me, I'm not in favor of medical marijuana being so legal will you the have country. Me arrest Hi. How are you? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Will you please answer, answer my question? Will you have, wait, 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 are you not going to answer his question, Governor? I, I think I have. I'm not. Yeah, no, he asked you if you were going to arrest him. He asked if you were going to arrest patients you? like him, Governor. Americans in general, from numerous polls, support marijuana legalization. 
Since Gallup started asking Americans if marijuana should be legal back in 1969, most have always said no, until now. In a Gallup poll released yesterday, 50% said pot use should be legalized. 47 to 42 saying legalize it. We asked for your view on our tax poll and it's been a blowout. 95% favor legalizing pot to bring in tax revenue. President Barack Obama has advocated changing drug laws and for medical marijuana. Oh yeah! He in fact was a frequent marijuana smoker back as far as high school in his chum game. However, since being elected, Obama has been distant on this issue. I do have one real question for you, Mr. President. What's with the marijuana crackdown? I mean, seriously, what is the concern? We will deplete the nation's Funyun supply? Breaking campaign promises and allowing federal marijuana raids to occur in places such as California, where medical marijuana is legal. What I'm not going to be doing is using Justice Department resources uh, to try to circumvent uh, state laws on this issue. Tonight, the DEA raided a medical marijuana club in San Francisco, and this comes just days after the Obama administration suggested that it would ease up on such actions. And if he had done time in prison, time in federal prison for his weed and a little blow, he would not be president of the United States of America. I've never had a puff of marijuana. I People never... who smoke marijuana must be set free. It is insane to lock people up. Gary Johnson in the Libertarian Party shares the same sentiment. 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related. That's not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that ought to be the focus. So I advocate legalizing marijuana. Control it, regulate it, tax it. It'll never Never be legal for kids to smoke pot or buy pot. It may be a shock to hear, but it seems Romney and Obama have more in common in terms of their policies than they have differences. Besides their similarities in gun control and in practice marijuana, both Obama and Romney support crippling sanctions against Iran. What is your red line with Iran? Well, my red line is uh, Iran may not have a nuclear weapon. Iran as a nuclear nation is unacceptable to the United States of President America. President Obama said exactly the same thing. He said it is unacceptable. This administration has systematically imposed the toughest sanctions. Today, Iran is isolated and the world is unified and applying the toughest sanctions that Iran's ever experienced and is having an impact inside of Iran. Oh yes, they're having an impact in there Iran. Are new U.S.-led sanctions that are limiting who Iran can sell its oil to. Crude sales make up most of the country's exports there's less foreign currency coming in. Go back a year ago, then it cost 11,500 rials to buy one US dollar on the free market. In the last two days, it's up to 37,000 rials. That's a 75% drop in value. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon laid out exactly who those sanctions have been impacting the most. The sanctions, he said, have had a significant effect on the general population, including an escalation in inflation, a rise in commodities and energy costs, an increase in the rate of unemployment, and a shortage of necessary items, and that includes medicine. As long as I'm President of the United States, Iran will not get a nuclear weapon. We then organized the strongest sanctions against Iran in history, and it is crippling their economy. But their economy is in a shambles. I underscore the, the same point the President made. Crippling sanctions are something I called for five years ago. They do work. You're seeing it right now in the economy. They also both agree that government should use stimulus spending in some cases to help the economy. He's talking about a $700, $750 billion economic stimulus package. Uh, he wants it to be passed uh, as soon as possible. What do you think about this proposal? Uh, I think there is need for economic stimulus, and, uh, and government can help make that up in a, in a very difficult time, and that's one of the reasons why I think a stimulus program is needed. No, I'm glad that Governor Romney agrees with the steps that we're taking. Need we go on? Oh, we can and we will. Here's another. Obama obviously supports taxpayer-funded loan programs for college students, and Romney does as well. I want to make sure we keep our Pell, Pro Pell Grant program growing. We're also going to have our loan program so that people are able to afford school. More debt and less jobs. More debt and less jobs. These programs and funding have returned the opposite result of what people who support them want. Instead of making college more affordable for those who want in, colleges have lowered standards to accept as many as possible and raise costs to keep reaping as much government funding as they can and churn out millions of graduates who have no chance in today's job market to do anything 
with their newly earned piece of paper degree. Speaking of pieces of paper, the Federal Reserve, neither candidate from the Democrat or Republican sides have expressed desire to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, nor nominate a new chairman, things that the youth in this country strongly support. Another subject with great youth opposition, the NDAA, signed by Barack Obama on New Year's Eve 2011. A bill written in secret by Senator McCain and Senator Carl Levin that would give the U.S. military the ability to arrest anyone and hold that person indefinitely, even if that person is an American rested, arrested on American soil. What does Romney think about the NDAA? You guessed it. As president, would you have signed the National Defense Act as written? Yes, I would have, and I do believe that it's appropriate. The Patriot Act is another similar example. What's Romney's view on the wealthy? So little time. So much to redistribute. <laughs> Cut taxes, keep taxes, or increase taxes. Obama and Biden are not shy to say they want the rich to pay a little more. You know the phrase they always use? Obama and Biden want to raise taxes by a trillion dollars. Guess what? Yes, we do. But Romney wants you to pay your fair share through him cutting loopholes and tax deductions. Mitt Romney and common sense conservatives will cut taxes on the middle class and they'll close loopholes for millionaires. Close loopholes for millionaires. I'm Mitt Romney and I approve this message. This man seems like a mystery, an enigma. What goes on in his head for him to be so wishy-washy? Romney hopes to take his business experience and take most of the same policies he put in effect in Massachusetts to the federal level to fix our country. The problem is, neither major candidate has a realistic plan brought forth to tackle this very serious issue of our looming debt crisis. Trillion dollar deficits for the last four years. The president's put it in place as much public debt, almost as much debt held by the public as all prior presidents combined. Mr. President, two minutes. Obama's plans are no better than the Republicans' plans he criticizes. Why aren't they debating on how much to cut the military? which is 60% of discretionary spending. In reality, the president by himself has little impact on the overall economy and organizations who oppose a second Barack Obama term more often than not just jump on the bandwagon of the Romney-Ryan ticket. For instance, take a look at this ad. We must put an end to the out-of-control deficit spending and growth in government that's crippled our economy and robbed us of our liberties. And Paul Ryan, we the people say thank you for paid for and authorized by the campaign to defeat Barack Obama. How does balancing our budget by 2040, Ryan's plan, end out-of-control spending? GOP primary candidates Ron Paul and Gary Johnson announced plans to cut the deficit by one trillion the first year unequivocally balancing the budget during one term in office. Paul Ryan voted for TARP, the auto bailouts, Medicare expansion, housing subsidies, employment extension, and national ID, the making the Patriot Act permanent, surveillance without a warrant, no child left behind, keeping the troops in Iraq indefinitely, and the 2008 and 2009 stimulus. So I think it's a great pick for Romney. He's another big government crony, just like Romney. Don't vote for Obama, don't vote for Romney. I'm, I'm not voting for either one of them. If I vote for anybody, it'd be for Gary Johnson, but I'm not even planning on voting. Despite their debate bickering, Mitt and Barack do not greatly differ on policy. Should we expect any different? In 2008, Obama's top donor was University of California. The next, at over $1 million, was Goldman Sachs. Romney's top donor in 2008 was also Goldman Sachs, albeit at only about a quarter million dollars. By 2012, donors like Citigroup and Morgan Stanley were no longer top Obama contributors. Instead, Goldman Sachs donated over 900000 to Mitt Romney. Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, Credit Suisse Group, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Barclays, UBS, and Ernest & Young all donated hundreds of thousands to Mitt Romney's 2012 campaign. In total, Wall Street donated $18 million. Street is good. People act how they should. Knowing this, should any conservatives think Romney would be opposed to bailouts of too big to fails? Though they have the right to do so, as does any individual, because remember, corporations are people, my friend. It does tell us something about politics. Our election processes are not fair. 
At our country's founding, George Washington was very opposed to political parties. Today, the two choices we are given, yes, given, by the major parties are not real choices at all. Where are the other candidates at the debates? Where are the Libertarian Party, Constitution Party, Green Party, and others' representation? Why don't we have instant runoff voting or alternative voting? These are very important questions maybe this generation can answer in time. The truth is, Willard Mitt Romney may be a nice and moral man with America's interests at heart. He is a devout Mormon who believes in the Bible, as well as we assume, wears the holy undergarments of the Mormon temple. In the same token, Obama may be a nice fellow who wishes the best for Americans too, from all upbringings and backgrounds. But when both these people try to paint a picture that they're so different from each other, remember what we've shown to you here and know that much higher contrasting opinions exist. You just won't see them from the same elephants and donkeys in the circus of today's political theater.